uh, Alex to be here with us today. It's, uh, it's nice. The presentation was excellent, and I was just curious to know whether you could comment on something that I found myself quite ironic: is the fact that we are all dealing with single patients during the consultations, and we are all believing that we are doing personalized medicines because we are adjusting the immunosuppressive drugs and so on. And in fact, we are doing it more like in an empiric way. And you just told us that uh, it was not the good way to go and we had to put science into that. And in fact, we need thousands of patients to really know what we have to do with a single one. So I was curious to know you reconcile these things. Yeah, that's right. Actually, uh, personalized medicine has been done since ancient Greece. And as doctors, we are struggling every day with patients and we try to put the right treatment on the right in for the right patient. And uh, we are now in the strategy and how the group of patients can benefit to one patient. So this is possible due to large cohort implement of new technologies inside and multi-dimension analysis, which are quite complicated, but, but can be powerful to move from group of patients to a single patient and try to predict his individual risk of graph failure, for example. Okay. What also I find uh, very interesting is that obviously we are at the beginning of something because as far as I really understand what you, wish you show us, uh, previously is that we are getting better in predicting things but the truth is that we are not so good at treating them so uh, how do you think that we the fact of predicting things will help to treat them I guess that maybe we can use these things to to as surrogate marker in clinical trials or maybe you can comment on that yeah you're right so uh, in transplantation we are lacking a uh, prospective random astray right and uh, to my point of view, the integrative box or those risk profiling strategies can be useful to know what patient to include in what clinical trial and what should be the surrogate. One of the issues is that in transplantation, you need to wait for seven, eight or 10 years to start to see differences in terms of outcome. So given the restriction in money and uh, how the industry is investing on that, we need to have precise surrogates, integrative equation for risk profiling as a surrogate endpoint for clinical trials, which could, could give you uh, an answer at one year after the inclusion in, in the protocol. Okay, that sounds great, but you spoke about money and I think that this is actually a critical point because all these things, they cost a lot of money. Omics and all these things, well, they used to cost even more money. Now it's getting be slightly better, but if we have to generalize this to all patients, this obviously is going to cost a lot of money. So how can you yeah. um, imagine that this money that we spend today is going to allow us to earn some money later on. Okay, let me start answering your question by saying that losing an organ costs a lot of money, and that's for sure. So, in the other hand, the new technology's prices are just dropping down very rapidly. And for example, if you take the, the human genome, it costs a bunch of thousand dollars nowadays to have your genome. So. The money is important for how the technology and the analysis have to generate the smart data and to deal with that. And really the money has to go into the analysis of data. But of course, implementing new and new and new and new tools will lead to an increase of the cost. But it's worth it, I think, and the reward can be very important as uh, an epidemiology, as a public health. So when do you think we're going to start uh, winning money instead of spending it with this biomarker? Do you have uh, some expectations in the time? Or? I don't have any expectations, but my, I, my thinking is that we need to start embracing those new technologies and try to use them and see how they can be helpful as compared to the conventional systems. And um, it's going to take time and we will be making mistakes, but we can we can progress, we can make progress, and we are trainable, such as biomarker and trainable, and machine learning and trainable. Okay, and so what can you tell us? What is going to happen next now? What do you think is going to be the next step? So, as I said, the next step should be that uh, the societies, and uh, I'm thinking about also of the Banff schema, uh, would like to uh, make a very important move in embracing those technologies. And um, we don't have the answer on the best technology yet and how it should be assessed, blood, urine, or uh, kidney, or the three. But we have to start. And uh, it's not science fiction, it's today, and we need, we need to start. We will be facing hurdles, but it's worth it, I think. Okay, thank you very much. So we look forward to hear what you have to say about that in two years from oh now yeah. in Barcelona. Thank you, Olivier. Thanks. Thanks.